Hey everybody, Zach here once again for the Friday Fishing Report for Pacific Angler. This week we got uh, something a little different for you. Uh, we did one of these videos last fall and it was quite popular, so we're going to do a few more this year. Uh, if you've been living under a rock, you probably haven't heard of twitching jigs, but they are one of the most effective ways to fish for coho salmon. And over the past couple years, we've found they work really good for chum salmon, chinook, steelhead, trout, you name it. These are pretty effective lures. They're a lot of fun to tie. One thing you'll hear us saying at the shop is that uh, you need more than you think you do and have a variety of colors. So definitely experiment with these. Play around with it, have fun. Um, it's a cool way to experiment with a lot of cool different materials like the, the hairline bling rabbit strips, flash of booze, rubber legs, rabbits, uh, crosscut rabbits, polar chenille, uh, you name it. Uh, I think we're gonna come up with some pretty cool stuff this year this fall as we fish uh, twitching jigs for salmon throughout the season. And uh, this is gonna be an easy one to kind of get you guys in the game, kind of get you started on some stuff. They're pretty easy to tie and a lot of fun. Um, and they are super, super effective. Don't let us understate that fact at all. They just plain work. So let's get to it, shall we? Do have a bunch of twitching jigs on the way, at least the components. Uh, we got a bunch of custom stuff coming from our friends at Big Sky Flying Jigs. This one here happens to be a local company, Tasty Tackle. These are their tungsten twitching jigs, so they're a little shorter and a little smaller than what you'll find on our custom ones. Um, but because of the tungsten head, you can have a shorter shank. Um, some guys like that, it revolves, uh, results in a little better hookups and uh, a few less lost fish, I guess. Uh, the fish don't have as much leverage with the larger hook shank. So they're kind of cool, they sink really fast, they cast really far. We're hopefully going to be carrying these this fall as well. Since they are tungsten, they are a little bit more expensive, so we'll see what we can do for you guys on that. But like I said, play around with colors. Colors don't matter for the most part. So this one I'm calling the Cotton Candy Twitching Jig. Kind of fun colors. So I'm going to start with some regular zonker strips, so just some traditional cut, so all the fibers are flowing backwards. That's what we want. For the collars, we like to use cross cut. So if I show you the hide here, you can see it's actually cut against the grain. So complete opposite of what our normal tails are going to be. And these are better for wrapping around the hook shank. They create those nice fluffy collars to create a lot of volume and bulk and movement. So I'm going to tie this in right on top of the hook shank here. This is actually going to be the underside. Um, I do see a lot of twitching jigs tied with the rabbit strip in this way. You can invert it puncture the hide on the hook and pull it around so that it's actually the other way around. I don't think it really matters. The fish don't really care. So I like to trim this so that the hide is about the length of the jig. And I cut the hide on an angle and I do this just so that you don't have a big flat end. So if you, hopefully you can see that there. It's cut on an angle. This just allows that rabbit to taper. It gives a little bit more movement into the fly or jig, I should say. Same with your fly tying stuff. My next material is going to be a little bit of flash on the underbody. This is some fluorescent fuchsia polar chenille. Whenever we tie in this stuff, I like to have the fibers facing down. That way when I wrap them, they face backwards. If you tie them with they're facing up, they're going to face forwards. So I'm just going to pull some of the fibers back. I'm going to tie in that cord like so. For thread on this fly, I don't think I mentioned that, it's some 140 denier, something quite stiff and, and burly, something that's not going to break, so I can really crank down on these materials. And I'm just going to wrap this forward, I'm going to do a bunch of wraps here, maybe about a third of the way up the hook shank. And like I mentioned, you're going to want more than you think you need, because if you are fishing twitching jigs correctly, you're going to lose them. They're going to hang up on the bottom, um, you're going to break them off, it's nature of the beast. So tie more than you think you need or purchase more than you think you need and get a variety of colors. So we find color doesn't matter too, too much, except for when it comes to the chum world, like I mentioned before. And uh, what we find is you'll hook up a couple fish on one color and then all of a sudden they disappear. And you're like, where did those fish go? They are still there. As soon as you change color, you will start hooking up again like crazy. So have a bunch of options at your disposal and take her from there. So there we go. So if you notice, I wrap back on that polar chenille just to force it all back. I'm gonna add some flashaboo onto this guy. So this is some Mirage flashaboo. 
in opal blue. This is 3315 for all you flash blue nerds out there. This is a lot of reflectancy to this this flash boot. It's almost like a mirror, which is kind of cool. And I don't really know how many I take here. I take a good chunk, a good solid chunk. Don't be shy. And I'm just going to cut that off nice and close. You can use rubber legs at this stage if you like as well. Flash boot is really wispy. It's got that nice movement to it. And I'm just going to fold this over in half and trim all those fibers again. I got a bunch here. Again, you can use uh, Crystal Flash if you like. Flash boot is a little more limp, so it swims a little bit better. And since I cut it right down the middle, I'm gonna kind of taper these ends a bit. You ever want blunt ends when you're tying in materials, you want them to be kind of tapered like so. That way they they move more independently and get a more little more life out of the fly or jig. And I'm gonna to try to tie this roughly in the middle, right on top. A couple tight securing wraps. I'm just gonna take my thumb, kind of spread those fibers out a bit, get a little more coverage over this part of the jig and so I'm gonna pull this all back hopefully I can get all the fibers here some of them don't want to cooperate that's okay and again before I cinch them down spread them out with your finger some nice even coverage on here and really lock it down in place like so and as you can see there we've got a good chunk of flash that's gonna flow really nicely in the water and now we're onto our cross cut rabbit strip, which is gonna be our collar. And all I like to do here is just take a little chunk off the hide. Just makes it a little bit easier to tie in place. And again, it's nice, tight, really crank down on it. This 140 is not gonna break on you. So crank her down nice and good, really lock it in place. When you start hooking into fish, if you're not losing the jigs, um, you don't want them to fall apart after one fish, so really crank down. You can add some super glue if you like to. And all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna polymer this. So what I mean by that is I'm just gonna wrap, and as I'm wrapping, I'm just gonna pull everything back. Slight overlapping wraps. This just creates a little bit more bulk. And we just go all the way forward until we get to behind big tungsten head there. I like to make just a little hot spot. You can add some schlopping in here or other feathers. I think we'll kind of play around with that stuff in future videos. I'm just gonna come in here, really kind of crank down on there. Secure that in place. Get some nice tight wraps. Trim that as close as I can. And with my thread, I'm gonna build up a nice hot pink collar. You could add some normal chenille in here, some dubbing, you name it, even some schlopping. It's a good material to have here. Just make sure I got some nice even coverage there, which I do. Come in with my whip finish tool. I'll probably do a double whip finish here. You can add some super glue at this stage if you like as well, or some UV resin. I find the rate that you kind of lose these jigs not totally necessary to make them super bomb proof. And there you have it. Cotton candy twitching jig. Which is kind of fun. So, like I said, play around with colors. Come on into the shop. We can uh, show you some of our favorites. and uh, Or we can set you up with all the materials to tie your own. It's pretty easy to tie. Not much to them. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. And we'll see you next week.